Really? Shira Malois, the Mamma Kim, the Sikha Dainai Adaina, Shima Bekaili, Tiana Zaka Shuba, is the Kail Tafanai. In my Vaina is the Shmaya Dainai Miyama. Kim has the Kalaman Pivare. Kvisi Adaina keeps on Afshi, but what are you healthy? Nafshi Adainai, Mishaimir and Labaiker. Shaimirim Labaiker. Yachel is a hell of a noy. He might know a hell of a bad bay, my fidus. Oh, if that's his rail, Mikai Labai noisa. We gathered together the nine days, days of Avelis of Kali Yisrael, and Kali Yisrael is in Avelis, missing the base Mikdash, the Churban base of Mikdash, the Churban of Kali Yisrael, we're getting together, added on to this Churban, it's a Churban of a family, a Churban of our Kehillah, the Petira, of one the Cheshuvah, Cheshuvah our Kehillah, our Kehillah, a good Kehillah, Toronto, Kali Yisrael's Kehillah, the Vienna family, Ha'ish HaChoshuv, HaChosid, Chaim Baruch Mor, Chaim Ben David, all of Dr. Diana. Dr. Diana, I know him for 40 years since we were here. The Pasuk that he said every day by Shman Esrei, the Mordechai Mo'ahavti Tarasecha Kol Ayoyimi Sichosi. The Havas Torah. Anyone who ever saw the Havas Torah, I remember when he made the Siyam HaShas, and he was able to make, he finished Gantz Shas, the Simcha that he had, was the greatest simcha than anything else he had ever accomplished. <laughs> the simcha, I remember when we, I went there and he, he I can't believe it. The, the Rabbi Hashem gave me the schus to be able to learn through shas. And by him, it means learning, 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 harboring through shas. And every time he learned the Havas Torah that he had, the love for Torah, the love for mitzvahs. I just happened, everything's I brought this a few weeks ago, I met, Rabbi Saf Shlita, who knew him from Ottawa, we met him in Ottawa. And he told me, he asked me, how's Dr. Diana? He said, what Dr. Diana did for Ottawa, the kashras he put up there, everything he did for the community, wherever he went, everything is Hashgacha Pratis. He was Nifter, He was Nifter in the day, of the of the the siluk of Aharon Akoyin, have metalmid of Shal Aharon, Oyev Shalom Eroid of Shalom, Oyev is Abrius and Mekarvin LeTorah. Anything depicts Dr. Diana, the Oyev Shalom Eroid of Shalom. From any time we spoke, any time all the years, Pastor Shalom never to be a machloikus, do everything to to avoid machloikus. Anything to avoid Chasusham, the opposite of Shalom, which caused the whole Churb Mesa Migdash. Oyev Shalom, where every community he went, wherever he was, the Oyev Shalom, the Raid of Shalom, Oyev is Abriyos, loving every person, the love every time I felt, every time the love that he gave to you, every time you met him. Oyev Sabriyos, loving the Rabbi Shem's Briyos, loving every person. Sometimes I felt so humbled, the cover he gave me because I'm the rug. 
person in his caliber in Torah and Mitzvahs, a person in his caliber in Ahavas Torah and Ahavas Mitzvahs, and what he did for Mitzvahs wherever he went, on the Karb and the Torah, and through that action he was always Makarib, always the Torah. He was nifta on the day of Aharon Akoyan because he was the Talmud of Shalaharon. He was from the Talmud of Aharon wherever he went. He was the Semel of Oyev Sabriois, Oyev Shalom, Roid of Shalom, Makarv and Torah. And that's he did his whole life. The love for Torah, the love for mitzvahs. Tzilach Mekwe Atzain. So Chazal say, that if you're going, if you go going to Golos, what keeps you going is to remember if you are trying to remember the always, always remembering the tradition. How we so makbet to remember the tradition that he in the Gedoyle Gedoyne Italia. Anyone who knows the Gedoyne Gedoyle Italia from the Masoria Satora that we have, that we have. From the Gaina again, and to be careful to remember the Ikriat sign, to remember, to remember the footsteps of the sign, to remember how the Minhagim was, and to be careful in every minute from before, to be careful and like Mandel Rimnova said that Minhagim are more important for Claudius than anything else. Kasu Shalom, remember and tells they always spoke about that when they stopped one year Kumpirkan. When they stopped one Yom and the second Yom Kippur, because it doesn't, the first Yom Kippur does make any sense. That was the beginning of the Harisa Satira. When you go against Minhagim, and he was so careful, in the Minhagim of davening, Minhagim of everything doing, and the children continue to this, this Minhagim, and these, you see from the children, Danny, Manny, and Janowski family, the continuing continuing preserving the Ikhvei Atzayin, preserving what was with Makabal Gavain from the Tat and the Mammon, what came from before, the generations before, the, the aristocracy of, of Italian Yiddishkeit, and what he did for the whole family, everyone, everyone, brothers, sisters, brothers and sisters, love everyone in the family, Makarva and Latoira, Makarva and Latoira, sometimes there are some people that are very good to others, but you really see how how are you to your family? It's unbelievable what he did for his family, for every one of them. He traveled to Italy, brought them here. Anything, caring about them, caring about them. And this is the Oyev Sabrios. Oyev Sabrios is how do you take care of your own? How do you take care of your own? And and the love between him and his children, and the love between him and his grandchildren. The love of him and his family, the Ahava that he, he gave, the full Ahava, and it was reciprocated. The, the Kibbut Avaim of the children, unbelievable till the last moment. Kibbut Avaim of the whole family, the sons and their family, the daughter and her family, till the last minute, the Kibbut, the, the unbelievable Kibbut Avaim, do everything for a parent, everything to make sure he was able to daven till the last day. He was able, in the last moment of his life that he heard Kiddush and he sang Zmiris. He sang Zmiris to the Rabbi Nishalaylam. And he was nifta from singing Zmiris, Shabbos Kaidish, with the, with the Ikve Atzayim, with the Minhagim that he had from before, the Nigunim that he had from before. Rav Lach Soi V'Sahar Hazeh, Sulach Atzvayna, as I'll say, as the Mesvarim say, Hahar is the Yitzhahara. Rav Lach, you go through the Har, the so it's fine to learn Tyra. You learn Tyra. Tyra is the Rossi Eitzhar, Rossi Tyra Tavlin. That was his, his medicine for everything. Dr. Diana's medicine was for everything was Tyra. Tyra was his biggest medicine and that he gave into the children. There's nothing more in the biggest nachas he had from his children and grandchildren. All by Havei Tyra, Lime de Tyra, Gedoylem de Tyra, every one of his family. When a person like that leaves, there's another void. And there's another void in Kali Yisrael. Kali Yisrael ain't Taira. Remember my Rebbe of Gifteh Chaim always used to say, 
Kivegas Torah is a Torah. The main test. We're in Golos. Dosesh Dam is a Torah. We don't have the real Torah. We're waiting for the real Torah when Mashiach will come. Dr. Diana, you was always a person who always tried to find, help everybody, help Pal Yisrael. Pal Yisrael is going through such hard times, such hard times. You would be the first ones to run down to Florida to help, the first one to help anyone who needs. And that's what you taught your children, every one of them, to help another person is the first thing, run to the other end of the world to help another person. Go up to Shemayim first, plead for your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Plead for your community, plead for Klal Yisrael. Plead for Klal Yisrael that the Savail should end. to see the Simcha that you had of doing mitzvahs, the Simcha that you had. Shvizaycha with all of us to come to go connect Mashiach to Kainu in Hair of Amen. Amen. Nana lived his uh, whole life from the beginning um, a certain Ernstkeit. He wanted something out of his life. He wanted something out of himself. He wanted something out of his children. He just wanted a pure, pure Yiddishkeit, a pure growing, a pure being connected to the Rabbi Nishal and Messiah. And we see, you know, um, I'm only on this world 40 years. Some people here a lot longer than me, but you see people like that, people that do live their life lishma and live their life with just a focus on doing what the Rabbi Shalom wants them to do. The Rabbi Shalom has a funny way of making sure that that happens, whether it was how they envisioned it or not. But people that uh, their main focus is to make the Rabbi Shalom happy and their main focus is to is to do what the Rabbi Shalom wants. It happens, Bar Hashem. Uh, on April seventeenth, nineteen twenty-six, there were uh, two members of royalty were born into the world. Queen Elizabeth was born in uh, somewhere in England, and uh, Nona was born in uh, the Isle of Rhodes. And uh, sure, there was a, a lot was dreamed about in England, and see what came out of that. Um, but uh, no, no, from a young boy who was sent off to yeshiva, he was eight years old. Um, I'm sure his father had a vision. I never got to meet him. But from a young age, Nono had a vision of uh, building a family and building a a tired of family, no matter what it took. He spent the years of the war, spent them learning in yeshiva. His grandfather, his father got a special car to take them to Switzerland when the, the Nazis came to Milan. And uh, he was able to learn with a lot of good Israel there for a few years in um, Erbachko in Montreux. And when he came back after the war to Milan, the only thing he wanted to do was to get married and build a family and make sure the family was going to be able to follow in the Rabbi Nishlam's ways. I didn't get to uh, attend my grandmother's avaya, but um, my grandfather saw something in her that uh, some people very close to him didn't, but this was him. He felt she was going to help him build the family that he wanted to build, and she was going to help him build the right and teach his children the right mahalach. And uh, no matter what anyone felt, and no matter uh, what his chasana looked like, he got married, and uh, he started building a family. And my grandfather, 
He grew up, he had one brother, his brother was 10 years younger than him. He grew up with three cousins, Shaul, Daniel, and uh, Shulamit. And they decided to go to Eretz It was 1949, I think, or 1950, something around there. And they decided to go to Eretz Yisrael. And they were going to build a family there, all of them. And they tried to get visas. And my nonu was very skeptical about moving to Eretz Yisrael. He didn't like uh, what he heard. He was very skeptical about uh, Yiddishkeit. was going to be able to be followed to Derech the way he wanted. His cousins convinced him and pushed him, and he decided he was going to go with them. And then there was a little bit of an interesting story happened on the train. He ended up back in Milan. They ended up at the port. He got his visas to go to Canada, and he decided it was Basharat. He wasn't going to go there. So he moved to Canada for Hashem. Some of them ended up from, some of them didn't. His family in Eretz Yisrael, but he ended up in Canada. It wasn't easy. I've heard stories. I wasn't around, but uh, trying to make a Parnassa, he had two PhDs that he had uh, in, from the University of Rome. He was trying to make Parnassa in Montreal. That's where he moved to originally. He had to retake his PhDs. They only let him take tests on Shabbos. The lengths that he had to go through to make sure that he was able to, to, to get his PhD in microbiology and eventually work for the Canadian government. And um, every day, he used to take the bus to work, he used to take his Gemara with him. And like the Rav mentioned, definitely one of the uh, fondest memories I have of my grandfather was at Tia Mashas. I have a few cousins here. I don't know, I don't even know how old I was, but uh, I was in Viewmount. I remember it. We father picked us up from school early. We went to Viewmount. We made a siyum It was mamish like a chasana, and it was amazing to me. I, I'm, I, I don't know if I was ten years old. I don't remember when it was, but I always saw my grandfather learning. And I remember, I was like, it's the first time Nano finished shas. Nano sure finished shas ten times already. I, I couldn't. I, he always was learning. I couldn't be couldn't be masik. I'm a little older. I know what it takes to finish shas. You know, it wasn't. Uh, he didn't learn shas with Daf Yomi. He learned shas. He learned shas and uh, Baruch Hashem, and it uh, put something into us. Chashiva Satira, Nono used to always talk about his rabbeim, the way we talk about his chavrusa and his rebbe, Rabbi Glazerman. Such a chashiva, the way he would talk about a different rabbanim, Rabbi Friedler, Chod Lachaim, talk about not the Schiller, the different people that he had to do with in. Uh, very strong. And um, it was amazing for us as grandchildren, I'm sure for his children as well, to hear the, the, the Hashiva Satayra he had. And we saw it at the Chush. I remember um, when Yoni got married in Cleveland. We all came to Cleveland the day of the Chasana, and we were taking family pictures. One thing about my Nono is he didn't like garbage. He didn't like, you know, he wanted things going the way they were supposed to be going. And, you know, you go to a chas and people taking pictures, schlepping, wasting time. We're all sitting there in the lobby and he wandered off. It's time for the pictures with the grandparents and no one can find him. Where was he? He found him on the other side of the lobby where no one could bother him. He was sitting and learning. I don't know, I don't know how long he was learning by the time we found him. But that was him. I once, uh, when I was a bacher in Eric Tisrol, uh, Yoni made a pit ben. And um, my nono and nona decided they wanted to come to the Pindar Ben. They flew in with my parents, and my parents left, and they wanted to stay in Eretz another week. So my father asked me, you know, they're going to be here themselves a week. I should check in on them every day. I was learning a brisk. The walk from brisk to the Plaza Hotel is a five-minute walk. It's not a big deal. So I went there a couple times during the day, and nono convinced me Shabbos morning I should come down with him in the Italian show, and then I should come eat with him the Suda. And we finished davening. We came back to the Plaza Hotel. You know, these hotels, they daven. I think they eat the suit like at 1.30. So he made me learn with him for an hour and a half. And then we came to the, to the Suda. Yeah, it's a big hotel. They have a whole food set up. And it's like a buffet style. So we sit down, we make Kiddush, I might see. And he tells me, now is for my favorite part in the Plaza Hotel. 
like waiting there, serving some schmuck food, something. I, I don't know. I was like, what? He's like, no, no, you have to turn around, face the buffet, and just watch for five minutes. Turn around. He's like, never. This is people. They can't control themselves. He's like, they see food, they go running. And he says, whenever I come to the plaza hotel, I like to sit and watch and remember I'm a person. There's chashivas to a person. You give me a whole schmooze, I remember. You have to remember the chashivas a person has. All because people go running after things doesn't mean you have to go running after them. And this was him. This was my no-no. He was always trying to, to work on himself and trying to make sure he had a, a clear a clear way of looking at the world. I don't know, my, my, uh, in the olden days in uh, Daniel Medical, my father, my, uh, not the last office, the second last office, my grandfather had an office right when you came in. Remember on the left side over there? And uh, I used to come, you know, see my father. I, I would never forget why my grandfather had an office. He was always either with Reverend Glazenman or by himself. He was always learning in his office. I could have forgot what kind of business he did there. It was Svarm Shrugs. There was always Gemara's open. It was a round table when you came in over there. He was always learning there. Or he wasn't there. I, I, <laughs> I never saw him working much over there. He was always learning over there. Later, when they moved to the new office, they built the smedges there for him. But uh, then it was just uh, him learning over there on the side. Um, all the years, you know, we used to come home to Inazman and and we, my father, we used to always see my father learning with, uh, with Nano, even when I was something, my father used to go to the Sephardi Kyle to learn with him, his office is next door. Recently, I was here a few uh, Ben Azmanim ago. Um, my son was almost my son's bar mitzvah. And uh, every day he would go uh, lane with Nano, of course. Whatever situation he was in, laning, no chumish, every mistake. Some of the mistakes was the difference in the Havara, but some of the mistakes, <laughs> and he made sure to, to get him on everyone. But um, that was him. I have another memory, one last memory I have of my grandfather. I was in Philly Yeshiva in the middle of Seder. Someone calls me and tells me, your father's on the payphone for you. My father's on the payphone. In the middle of, uh, so it wasn't my father's type to call me in the middle of Seder. It didn't make any sense. Like, okay. Scared something happened. I run to the phone. I pick up the phone. I said, hello, Abba? He goes, no, it's not Abba. No, no. No, no. Calling me in the paper. Like, <laughs> I don't know how he knew how to call me. So he tells me he was learning a Gemara. And the Gemara lists all the Mizmairim that the Levium used to sing by, um, on all the Yom Tavim and all the special days. And he said he was learning this Chavrusa and he asked him, like, how come it's not in a regular sitter? And he said, you know, something it did, the Levium did. And he whipped out his Italian sitter, showing him all of his mire. And he wanted to make sure I looked it up in the Italian sitter. And this was, uh, this was, no, no. He wanted to make sure that, um, he wanted to make sure we kept the Messiah. He wanted to make sure we knew what was right, what was wrong. I think uh, Davi also, me and Davi, we used to go to his house different days of the week. After school, Carpal would drop us off there. He would teach us Dik Duk. Um, this is how we grew up, Baruch Hashem. I just wanted to end with one last thing. In the last years of his life, my nono lived by uh, my aunt and uncle most of the time. Tommy and Maish, they lived in my house a little bit. And I know whenever they were in my house um, in the morning, you know, my uh, no, no, he didn't he didn't speak a lot towards the end of his life. Yeah, a little while ago, if you wanted to get him to speak, you spoke to Melash and Kaidas, he would usually answer you. But recently, he didn't speak much. But if you would go sit next to him and learn, he would talk to you. And my mother was in the house in the morning, and she would she would daven with him. She would sit there and daven, and he would finish all the ends of all the prakim, and he would say amen. And every time she she made a mistake, he would correct her. And my mother mentioned to me recently, I don't know when the last time he was there, but she was sitting down with him and he stopped correcting her. And she mentioned to me, she, does, she said she doesn't know how long. He said, if she can't correct her anymore, it means the end is near. So uh, the lessons we took from my nono, it should be a male for the family. And um, 
Rashi brings a marshal to the Melech that was traveling for a fuah for a son. He stopped in different places. And at the end of the trip, he chazered over with the son. And he told him, over here, this thing happened. Over here, that thing happened. Over here, you had a headache. Chazering over all the Masais, all the travels that he went through with the son. Meshkiach, Tam Yerak of the Tzal, he's doing the Dayik. The Shetan Rashi, who comes to the end of a Tkufa. And you have to be Mizbainen and chazer over what happened to the different Masais throughout the Tkufa. Coming to an end of a, a Dor in the Mishpacha, the end of a Tkufa. Maskezayin, chazer over the limudim that we got from, from our Nono. The different Masais that Nono went through in his lifetime. The Ershta Masa, the Masa the traveling in Italy. And the Masa in Italy, as you see in, in Heintige Parasha, when it goes to the different Masais, the Pasuk mentions the different Nesiyinis that happened throughout the different Masais. The Masa of Al Pnei Baal Tzvayin, the Masa of Ayachna Barisma, like Rashi says, Lashon Harif Nimraglim, the Masa by Harahar, where Aaron was Nifter, Muhammad with the Knanim. Every Tzkufa has its own Nesiyinus, every Tzkufa has its own Aveda. Nono's Nesiyinus, the different Nesiyinus, there are Nesiyinus, over every Tzkufa, the different Nesiyinus that came up by Nono, he was Aymeron with the Gavaldiga Hatzlacha. The Nesiyinus in Italy, you do have, there's come out nothing left from the Yiddishkeit, from the Italki Yiddishkeit, tremendous his harvest among the Goyim. And no, no, was Oymir on the Nesayin, even though his Kehillah was Taka Nesarab with the Goyim, Geferlich Saras of intermarrying with the Goyim. And no, no, was Oymir on these Nesayinus, was Makabo, Gvalga, Starka, Muna from his, from his father and from the Deiris before him. And he was Oymir on these Nesayinus in Italy. My brother did the Shidduch with the Enikol from Rabbi Yitzhak Rosalom, Rashiva from Shar Yesher. So my brother is Shver Rabbi Yitzhak Goldberg, is telling his, his Shver, Rabbi Yitzhak Rosalom, about the Shidduch. Who's the, who's the Chassan? He said, Diana. Who's the Mishpacha? He told him, You don't know, you don't, you don't know the Mishpacha. He's a son of Shtach in Toronto. So Rabbi Yitzhak Rosalom told him, And I do know the Mishpacha, that I was with him in Yeshiva in Switzerland, in Montreux. And he said, his Nusachim was, he said, I remember the Erlich of Yerushmein that I saw on his face. No, no, came time to, to leave Italy. Kaim Gavain, the Soyen from Lechlecha, Me'artzcha, Me'ladcha, and Be'savicha. The shame being able to be my Medeiris, that we're going to keep the Ter in Yiddishkeit after he saw the Shvachkeit in Yiddishkeit that was going on in Italy. He came to Montreal. Gavrelich and the Sionis from Shmir Shabbos and Kiyodua. Hardly Nuflu and that Kufa was a share and assigned to the Aymidan. Like my cousin Avi mentioned, he was Aymid and the Nisyanas with the exams that he had to take to be to be able to have a Parnassa. They were always shoulder back on Shabbos, and he was Aymid bin Asayan, even though even though meant uh, risk for his Parnassa, he was Matsliach, Kave himself in Tyra in Montreal by a Hirschsprung, part of his Khabur with the Hirschsprung, had a Kasher with him. He learned, he learned from him. Nachtem, the Massa from Ottawa. In Ottawa, the Tkufa in his life, where he was Baina Taira and Marbek Fechemayim in a tremendous Eifen. He was Leichem Mochemes Hashem. Levi state in the Beis Alevi, Parshas Bay, the Beis Alevi says that the Schus of the Gula Sida is going to come from Teir Shavapeh, the Beis Alevi's Mazber, we see by Churban Bayas, as Churban Bayas is Altinus Chinam. Zakhtar, that has the Kesher to Teir Shavapeh. What's the cash of the Teresh Alpez Zakta Beis Alevi? That what was the cause of the Sinas Chinam? Zakta Beis Alevi, the cause of the Sinas Chinam was because there was the Tztukim, Kozman Klai Yisrael was being shame of the Tayyar properly, Teresh Alpeksav, Teresh Alpeh. Everyone stood stark in the Derech Atayra. The Zakta, when it came to Kat of the Tztukim, there were, macha, there were Machish in the Amunah and Teresh Alpeh, Amunah in the Amunah Sachamim. He says that was that was Nechlak Yisrael Akita. That separated Klai Yisrael into separate groups. Benasa pure Bein Alavavas, and that caused the pure Bein Alavavas. 
the Ribsa Sinova Machlaikis, the Zeus Shagara Machurban. It was Marba, the Sinova Machlaikis, that was Gerim the Churban. The Mela Zakta Be Salevi, that which were Maimon properly in Teshav Al Peh. That's what brings that, that's what has, that's the Zchus, that's Brank the Gula Sida. Nono in Ottawa, Kiyadua, Nono was Leicham Mohammed Hashem. It was Leicham Mohammed Hashem when it came to the reform, when it came to conservative. Every Shabbos he put into the Mishpacha. Every Shabbos we walk five miles to Shul. How, how can you walk five miles to Shul? The only place that's near us is a conservative synagogue that's, that's not main Yonah Bechla. That's not main Yonah to go to such a place. Not everyone followed in his footsteps. But Nona was very makbar on this and he put this into the Mishpacha. My father knew growing up better to have it at home than if it means going to the conservative synagogue. And he put this into the Mishpacha. He was Leichem in Ottawa, Shtoldavek, a nice Shul, a Shul that's an Orthodox Shul, a Teirdika Shul. And the message that he gave over to his kinder, Mateira, Mateira Shalapeh. Who had the Mishkech is to say over as Bart from Rebellia. Rebellia said that Elder and Medad were half brothers of Moshe. When were they born? They were born after Yechevid divorced Amram. Amram divorced Yechevid. So they had Elder and Medad from a, from a second, from Yechevid had Elder and Medad from a second person. And then afterwards, Yechevid went, afterwards, Yechevid went and remarried Amram. He said, how was it? Amram divorced his wife. They can't all divorce their wives. What's Pshat Yechevid went and got remarried? So Rebellia Shrei said over, the Pshat is, as Yechevid was one door closer to Levi. And she understood the Das of Levi. She understood that she knew what Levi would have held better than Amram because she was one door freer. And Shkiyach used to say over, it's the Kudah Rebellia used to say, as the Freer the Gedar could be our door, is more Chumras, and Halachas is more Chumras. So the Freer the Freer the Gedar, there was a certain connection the Freer the Gedar had, a certain Pinim. In the Avedis Hashem at the Free of the Gedar had. This Pnim was there by Nono in a tremendous Eifin. Pnim, when it came to Shemir Shabbos, the Pnim, when it came to Kashras, the Messias Nefesh for Kashras in Ottawa, Maisa after Maisa that we heard from our parents about the Messias Nefesh for the Kashras in Ottawa. And like we said, the Messias Nefesh, the Mohammed, of the Reform Conservative, but those were the Mzayat to Taira. How it would bother him, it would bother him. The Pnim, that wasn't Stam an act, it would bother him. How, the, how when he saw people going there, going in Starf with them, when he built a new show in Ottawa, a new young Israel in Ottawa, I just heard over from the man of the Shabbos. He told me over, he remembers coming to show. He said, he's Gavaldige Hakar Satayu to my grandfather. So he remembers coming to show, davening across the table from Nono. And he remembers the, the Gishmak by davening. He remembers that it's just a Gishmak guy to be a Yid that he, that he felt that he got from davening next to him. I remember myself as growing up. I remember the Kriya Satayra, how the, the seriousness Nono took the Kriya Satayra with, he would take us over to him and he would say, Come, follow with me, the Taira. And he would point us point and the Kriya Satayra, the Chashivas for Kriya Satayra that he gave over. It's not as the Chashivas for Tila, those years when he was able to, when he had the Kaychas to do it, he used to come to the Yom Kippur for Yom Neiram. He was older, come to Yom Kippur for the Yeshiva. He was doing a davening the whole day in Yeshiva. When he had the Kaychas already, he would come, he wanted to be in Yeshiva for davening, in Yeshiva for Yom Kippur. Rishkel Shlaim Miller told us one time. That we have to be gal to get from Zerzeda. So he told us why. He told, he told us because he said, Lamaisa, there were a lot of people that came from his matzav that came over the, over the border that came to Toronto, came to America. And by them, the Iker was the Havara. The Iker was the Havara. The Mela, they didn't send their kids to Yeshivas, the Ashkenazi Yeshivas. And he said, Lamaisa, today, today we have to be busy with being the car of their kinder tzurek with Leila Achim. He said, Lamaisa, you have to have a gal to get cars to take to Zerzeda. And my father used to always tell us, that my grandfather used to say, I'd rather my son be a Yid than have the Havara. And it's not shot, it wasn't important to him, and Nahagim were very important to him. And Nahagim, he was very into them, and Nahagim was very into the Messiah that he had from his parents, and Nahagim that he had from his parents. But he understood as the Iker is designed Yid, the Nahagim is an the Iker is designed that my kids, my kids should be B'nai Torah, my kids should be Erlich Yidin. And he was Meiser, he gave his children over to the Yeshivas. He gave his children over, he was Zeicha to have, have children who were, who were Emes of B'nai Torah, Emes of Machzike Torah. Because he was mechanech them to be mechabel from their abeim, he was be mechanech them to give themselves over to the yeshivas. My father used to always say over the story when he came back to Benazmanim, and they changed the mechitza on the shul in Ottawa, and they called the Rai Friedler, and the Rai Friedler told them that they shouldn't daven there, they shouldn't daven in the main shul, they should go to a separate minion downstairs. They made the bacham should make their own minion, and my grandfather wasn't there the first day of Yontif, but the in, in when they when the when they made the separate minion. Abra Lamaisa, the, the people from the shul came to him to complain to him. And he told me the message he gave over to my father was, Chas you listen to your yeshiva, that's what your yeshiva holds. 
Adaraba until they talk had changed the back, until they talk had fixed up the Mechitza. That was the Chinuch that he gave over, giving his children over to the to Ray Friedler, to, to their to their Rebbeim, and he himself became a Shtikal Talmud of Ray Friedler after my father went to Yeshiva. He himself built a tremendous Kesher with Ray Friedler. The, the, that which people leave the derech atayr and go after the avoid desaras of the tufa comes from ozu makar ma'im chaim. Ozu makar ma'im chaim. Some say is the leaving from the mesayra, and that was the taka very stark as lach by him. The mesayra is atayr, the kirva to gedeli yisrael. How gedeli yisrael being mevatel himself to gedeli yisrael for ozu makar ma'im chaim. Pasha means pasha leaving the tayra. Is the ganza has skanos from nono the ganza ruach and the pnim and the fire when it came to the avoid hashem. Came from the fact that he connected himself to Tyre. He connected himself to Tyre. He was always layman. He was always a layman Tyre. Remember, one of our Bayim once told me that, you know, where's the where's the big retirement coil? Where's the big retirement coil? So by Nono, there was he had a retirement coil. His retirement coil was in Yeshivas Nei Yisrael. His retirement coil afterwards was in the Sardi coil. Tkufa after Tkufa, he was there. I remember as a bacher coming every day by recess, look opening the door for the base medrash. And as a bacher in high school, and seeing Nono in the base medrash. Nono and Rabbi Glazman sitting there together, learning about the sugya and screaming at each other. You could hear the koilis out of the base medrash when they were screaming at each other and learning the the, the roshim that it made on the chashivas atayra. Every morning, you know, you open up the kfiyas. Every single morning, you open up the base medrash door and you see your grandfather sitting there in the base medrash, learning with uh, with uh, with any from the from the chashum from the shtat, the roshim that it made on the the roshim that it made on us and the. The kviyas and Taira and the chashivas and that it gave over to us, that we saw, that we saw in Nana, and Nachdam in the Tkufa and the Sfardi Kail also afterwards when it was hard for him to come to Yeshiva, and I remember my grandmother Nana once telling me that Nana calls first Seder to learn, second Seder to learn, a night to learn. He said he's Mamish and Kolel, he's Mamish and Kolel. She used to say proudly about him. And those years he taka, he was kavei himself, he was Mamish and Mamish as a a young man, the whole day sitting and learning. Same Rashi states in Vayichi. And we have to be gewaltig and makertayv as everything we have taka came from his mysterious nefesh. And he was zeicha to have mitasse shleima to be to be yotz my lomay and get mitasse shleima. Bila mavus to netzach umach Hashem to macham el kapanim. As are over a little bit, my cousin spoke about. We all have very similar memories. It's a riot that they're true. The Ramban in this past week's parsha brings to the Mer Nevuchim. It's so important to remember the Masoyis that Klaisal went through. Because Kosh Baruch Hu knew if he would come later, later generations wouldn't believe that such such Nisim happened, such Nefloyis happened. And they're, they're, they're saying it never happened. So they said, we have to be mask here, every prat, every prat, and go through every masa, every place where they went from here to there to there. So we remember every single nace and every single, every single thing that happened to Kali Yisrael during that, that, that kufa. The Baruchim brings us Ramban and says, when he looked at a world map, he understood the words of the Ramban. And you're able to look b'chush and see every spot on the map, and you see the, the cities that they went through and every, every place they went, you understand B'chush, what Kla Yisrael went, to, went through, and that builds a tremendous emuna in, in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. <coughs> Ruchim Firzais, and he says, and if we understood B'chush, that everything, every single prat in a person's life comes from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, every single rega verega, is, is, is ordained and, and, it's, and it happens through Akash Baruch Hu's will, we'd be mishabit ourselves to Akash Baruch Hu in a, in a gewaltige way. If we'd understood stood at this, this you say. My grandfather, Nono, had his own masais, as Davi said. Throughout the generation, throughout his, his tkufas, 
And I think it's incumbent upon us, his, his, his family, his grandchildren, his children, to recount them, to remember them, to understand the Nisim and the Neflois and all the extraordinary life that he was Zaycha to live. Nona grew up in Italy, was then went over into Switzerland during the war, which is a, probably saved his life. He was Zaycha to learn a Yeshiva Mantra. Later went to Canada, to Montreal, to Ottawa, and then to Toronto. In every single place that Nona was, he sought to be Mikadash Shem Shemaim. He focused on being Mikadash Shem Shemaim. When he came to Canada, he was offered other jobs in different cities. I think it was in Edmonton and other places, but he insisted on always being in a place where there's a vibrant from community where his children will be able to, to grow into proper and proper Yiddishkeit. And he knew that that would only happen in places that were that had from uh, from places, even in when they lived in Ottawa, he would send his children to learn in Toronto, into Nerysrol, Yaakov, and be in places where he knew that they would be able to to grow. No, no, fought in every single place where he was for kashras for Yiddishkeit. He was known as a kanoi for Yiddishkeit. There's nothing that would that would stop him in his way for 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 Yiddishkeit. My brother was just telling me a story that we used to walk to Aguda from our house or from his house to the streets. It was a, on the way, there's a base Tifla where, where the Goyim Davin, he would stop every time and spit on the floor and say, Shakas to Shakat Senu. It was a Kanois that he had, that there was nothing that, 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 that stood in his way when it came to Yiddishkeit. About 40 years ago or so, Nono had a terrible stroke. And they, there was no way that they thought that he would live to the Arich Yomim that he lived to. <coughs> and it was a Gavaldiga Nase that he was able to, to come out of that and live a strong, stark of 40 years after that in, 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 a, in a Gavaldiga way, which we remember. My memories of, of Nono will always be of Simcha, of humor, and of his connection to Kaidish. My, my memories over the last 30 plus years have always been of Nono and Kaidish. Avi was mentioning in the, back in the days of the lab, I remember the same round table right when you walked in. And I remember him either learning or sitting with Mushulachim giving tzedakah. That, that, that's what it was, nothing else. We had soda on the side there, but that's what, that's, that's what happened there. He would learn and give tzedakah to, to Mushulachim. Every, <clears throat> he was always, always learning Gemara. We used to see his Gemaras and he had a red pen. They would scribble in the, he, he would not be able, no one would be able to read it, but he had notes across all of his Gemaras of, of, uh, of, of, of through Shas, whether, whether he was learning with the right Glazerman or himself or with others, it was always, it was always with him. The Gemara was always with him. Similarly also to what the Rav said, the first theme of Shas that I ever was by for sure, but I think that I ever heard of was Nono Siem. And I, I remember the Simcha, I remember the, the excitement of it when we all came to it. And, and this, is before, this is before it was common that people were finishing Shas and Daf Yemi. It, was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a common occurrence. And I remember the, the Simcha that we all had as a Mishpacha and seeing Nono, seeing Nono do that. His dick took, his laning, we used to learn, we used to dive in together downstairs in the shul here. And then I would make sure that there every single, every single, every single knech was, was correct. And he would make sure that the Balkair knew that and it would stop. <coughs> and there was never a Pasuk that he couldn't finish Balpeh. And that was an incredible thing to us. New Taira Tanakh, Balpeh. Literally, you can say, you can read a word anywhere, he would finish the Pasuk and be able to. To, to continue through. <coughs> we should be able to continue to recount Masois of Nono, relive them, remember them, and be able to Shtalavak Daris Yisharim, the Daris Yisharim that he built together with Nana Allah Hashalim. We should learn from them, bring them into our own lives, to give us to his, his neshama, 
Mark Hashem, do me our Kopanim and Amen. Shmuir Aglacha Hasha Taylor Hell Base of Kim. So Shlema Melech, when a person goes to Base of Kim, the Medrish learned, this means his final journey. Or it's not Sandy Bayodom. This world is the base, the bias from the Bayodom. Shmuir Aglacha Hasha Taylor Hell Base of Kim. When you go to the, the final journey to base Alikim, Shmar Aglacha. Zok the Medrish, Shimin, the Kisnin, Shimin Sichna, Ish Eitza Hoya, Hoya Hoiver, Bere Sichen, and Boris Birushaloi. He was a Yid who was Hoiver, Bere Sichen, and Boris. He gave himself over to the Klaal, to the Tsiburm. He took care of the Tzrochim. And he met Rabbi Yechon of Medzakei. Amalei Rabbi Yechon of Medzakei. Ani Godol Kamoicha. I'm just like you. One girl says, Ani Godol Mimeka. I'm, I'm even greater than you. So Rabbi Yechon of Medzakei asked, asked him, Zayagut, you, you take, you dig virus and you give water to people. It's a very important thing. But can you tell me in your bar, is this kosher for a mikveh? Is it not kosher for a mikveh? Someone mechuyev to be toivel. Is she as a person not mechuyev to be toivel? Can you tell me that? And therefore, he was called all of us amikram. The end of the pasuk: Shmar aglecho kasher teilech el beis elikim. All your ma'isim, all your tzor chitzibur. We call of the shmaya mitais aksilim zebach ki einom yoidim las esro. He says, the Medrash is learning up. Rabbi Yechon ben Zake was saying that you think you're coming mit ale, the gewaldige chasodim, and the tzorich etzibur, to beis alikim. Aber is eine yedea ben toiv lara. If someone can think that he's greater than Rabbi Yechon ben Zake. If Shimon Sichna could think that he's equal to Rabbi Yechon ben Zake. Then he's eine yedea ben toiv lara. And then he has nothing to come. With his all his Isaac with Sarah Khitzibur, he has nothing to come to base Alikim. Zakta Madrish, Yihi Mikur Khabaruch. Your mocker should be Baruch. Your mocker should be Gaben, should should have Tisefes, but Pashtis, this means the children, the Tailodis of a person. The Madrish Yadarshins, Yehi Mikurach Baruch. When you're called, when you're called, when you're called to stand. In your final, in your through your final journey, you're called, your turn is called, your number comes up. You should make sure that it's baruch. Because a person can take all his mocker, he can take everything that he has, and it's not connected to baruch. The Isaac Bitsarchitzibur, the Isaac Bitsarchitzibur from her baruch diana, the amida, the amida kachima. Against all, against all the winds that blew across the ocean and other continents, in other cities, and here in Toronto, the Amida Kachaim of Rabaro and his children is Yadua Mafursam. But the reason why it's Baruch, the reason why he is Baruch, is because he understood that he's Meshubat to the Rabbi Yechanan ben Zakai. He understood that the chilek between Toiv and Rav, it was mentioned before, Kanoyis. The Melamed of Kanoyis to Klal Yisrael is Pinchas. And Pinchas, in Targum Yenis and Shtei, Pinchas is the Mavaser Agula. Bishus is Kanoyis. He's the Mavaser Agula. Manovu alahori Ragle Mavaser. Mashmiya Toiv, Mashmiya Shalom, Mevaser Toiv, the Toiv and the Shalom. He brought out the Toiv from Klal Yisrael. 
So I'm going to be zayich to the heishiv of Pinchas. Heishiv is chamasi. He's going to be zayich to the heishiv levavay sabanim. When the rest of Klal Yisrael, Pinchas was noitzel shaloi. The Rabbeinu Shalom Dafke manufactured it that the rest of Klal Yisrael was Moshe and the Skenim were vehema boichim. Bechia, bechia. When is a person boicha? When something's over. When it's finished. When this is the matziv, vayim abayichim. Other times, Moshe was noyfal al panov. Moshe davin to improve the matziv, but here was a matziv of vayim abayichim. This is the matziv of Klal Yisrael. A roish hashavet is being mizaneh. And Pinchas was coming. Tafke had to be. Pinchas was mitoyich ha'eda. He changed the matziv of Klal Yisrael. His kanoyas came from a hakore, a hakore of the toiv of Klal Yisrael. The kanoyas comes from realizing how great Klal Yisrael is and how core of Klal Yisrael is Takorish Baruch. The job of Pinchas and Leo is Veheshit Leibobes Alponim, is to keep, to keep the cognizance and awareness of that greatness alive. Mashmiya Sholei Mevase Toiv. Pimchis is, is going to tell, going to bring out the Toiv and the Madriga of Klal Yisrael. Those is Kanoyitz. If it's connected to the Ein Toiv al if it's Mishubin, if it's Tachas, the Adrocha of the Ein Toiv al then it's Yehi Mekor Chaboruch. This is the Yid, the Raboruch Vienna. When I came to Toronto, it was a mere five years after he moved here. And I, every board that I saw had Dr. Baruch Vienna on its board. In five years, he became involved in every single thing in the, in the, in the city. And he was Yadua as one of the addresses. Cypher, Cypher Stock, as was mentioned before. And Cypher, any double type that had to be brought about, that was Baruch Vienna. On the Ligan and Learn and the Geschmack and the Simcha learning with the Parish and Yeshiva, Mita Melus. And bonecho kishsile zeisim soviv l'shulchanecha, literally, the bonim and the bnei bonim shpeter. It was connected to the toiv, the ain toiv ala toira. The eisik b'tzorich etzibur wasn't a bazun derezach, just giving the mayim, simply because there's a gashmiyas tiketzorich of mayim. The eisik b'tzorich etzibur was based on an awareness and, and, the primi- and on the primary place the Torah occupies by Klal Yisrael. And awareness is batless to the G'dayle Torah. Whether in his youth, to Pinchas Hirschsprung and later a Friedler, and then here the, by, by the Rosh Koyl, Zol Gesundsein, Rav Shleim Miller, and the Rav, Rav Lowy. It was in Gans in this battle to the Rabbonim and the G'dayle from Shtot and from Klal Yisrael. And he made a Rishim, and he made a difference. And that difference continues. It's getting greater and greater and more and more as time goes on. Sai in the Eisek B'Tzor Chitzibur. The Eisek B'Tzor Chitzibur is being the Israchiv, Shtot, the country, the Welt. And Sai, Ein Toiv Ela Toira, the Toiris for Hashem are growing. They're growing one by one, door by door. Grasser and Tyra and Grasser and Tyra and more and more Madragas that are being coined Nikna, Harbotsas Tyra and Limuna Tyra and Iona Tyra, Melus Atay. Yehi Mekor Chaboruch. This is when a person is connected to the Mekor, it's Boruch, it's Tysephus, it's Mitzrabe, more and more. Marshafa and Yifemara Fiazois. That the Medrash means to learn up, every person, where every person, when he's called, when he's called to the kever, the Makar over here is the kever. When a person's called to the kever, the Malachim come to greet him. And either they say, Baruch Habo, or Achmon al Islam, they say, Arur Habo. Today, we're hearing, we're listening. To the tremendous, to the tremendous chorus of the Malachim together saying to Rebaruch, Baruch, Habo, 
Baruch with all the Isaac Mitzorah Hitzibur. Baruch with the the Limur Atayra. Baruch with the Bonecha Kishsilei Zaysim. Kinei Kichain Yevoyroch Geber. Yerei Hashem. That we should see be Meheira. The Mavasir. The Mavasir Toi. We should hear the, the Besurah Sagula. Umocha Hashem Alekim Dima Me'al Koponim Ve'nei Mar Amein. I'm going to speak very short. As was mentioned, my father did not come from Lita, nor from Brisk, nor from Yerushalayim or Bnei Brak. He came from a place where there was Choshva Rabbonim, but Amoinam was a very, very posh to Amoinam. Father was a Gavalika Baralia. I'll never forget as we grew up, we used to notice something very interesting. We would notice that my father would come home, he would learn a bit, and then he would doze off. And then when he woke up, and it was time to go to bed, as quite often a lot of us do. He woke up, he went to wash his hands, and he opened up either a Mishnayis or a Gemara or a Chumash. He learned for five minutes, he closed and he went to bed. We used to ask him, why does he do this? And he would never really explain it to us. When we got older, we asked him once, one time, I don't know why, but he actually explained it to us. He said, from the time he was by mitzvah, he wanted to makayim the higis v'yayim v'layla. And he knows there's different drachim to do it. The person can speak about it. So therefore, he was makpid every morning by davening to learn for five minutes. And every night before he went to sleep to learn for five minutes. We're not talking about a boy who's brought up in a place there were a lot of people that he could see this from. This was something that he developed on his own. It was a shara that he developed on his own. And then later on in his life, he came here and he told us that in Ottawa, he had done cloud work. He worked a lot of cloud. Now it was time to learn Tyra. And he came here and he finished Shas, I believe, three times. There were people here who learned with him, but Heshi knows if you missed a dot, it was on a list. It wasn't a matter of learning a little bit here, a little bit there. Everything was done with the Savior. I remember one time he told us, not only was he learning with the Heshi, but he would call the Dialadaf. At that point, we know there was a Dialadaf, people would call. People would call in and get the dock. And I remember we told my brother and I one time that now there's, it's very, very busy. It's very hard to get a line. So he said, whenever he calls the person who administrates the line, he says he calls him and tells him there's no line. He tells him to call back in one minute. So my father said, I said, yes, yeah, so what happened in one minute? So I called back in one minute and there was a free line. So I met, he dabbled with us here in the shul. So I asked him, I said, can I say something? If there's 20 lines and people are on the dab, coincidentally, you know when someone's gonna be hanging up? So I wanna tell you something. Whenever I put the wrong daf on by accident, your father calls me. Whenever there's five minutes in the middle of the tape that's not on, your father calls me. Everything I do, with this daf, I do because your father is advising me continuously. Therefore, I feel I have a special achrayis to him. I said, what does that have to do? What's the answer to my, to my question? So he said, whenever your father calls me that he can't get a line, I pull the plug out. So I'm thinking to, my, to my, myself, you pulled the plug out. That, that means, you know, please don't finish the sentence. Yeah, that means exactly what you think it means. But because it's so essential 
to have him on the daf whenever he calls me, I do that. And that's how my father did everything. It was a Gavalik of Barley. I left out a lot, you know, a lot of the stories because some have been said and some will say at another time. The second thing before I conclude, it was Leichem de Milchem to Shilter. And everybody knew it. And everybody knew that one story was already mentioned. I remember one night I was speaking to somebody, uh, a caterer in Ottawa. There was a huge dinner at Shadow Laurier that made kosher. It was uh, in honor of the Supreme Court's uh, justice. There was a Yid, Boy Alaskan. And what happened was there was 220 plates short. So the caterer who was in Chal Shabbat, so he couldn't trust, but he, you know, he, he got a Gavalik Bekiyas in Yardeya. He started telling the Mashkiach, anyway, it's in the Binyoyim of the plates, so there are all sorts of material he wanted. It's Hafsid Maruba, it's this, what a Buzoyan is it going to be? So they went to two of the Rabbonim and they said he wants to use plates. But the Rabbonim didn't know what to say. So the Mashkiach said, I had a better idea. So they went to Dr. Diana. And he said, your father said to me, you tell him that if one plate hits the table, I'm going to announce publicly that the whole meal is kosher. <laughs> Later on, I did some work with this caterer. And he, and he said to me, I'll tell you, Damas, the Rabbonim, I wasn't worried about. It. I knew at the end there would be some Eitzah, they would find some way, they would find. I said, Dr. Diana, I knew full well that if he told me he was going to go and on the microphone and announced as the president of the Valakashas that the meal was in kosher, I knew full well. And listen, you know, I don't want, it was just difficult. He did, he had, you know, a lot of people weren't his friends. I remember one time we went to Ramshah, he had a special affinity with Ramshah, Zechem Sadek Libracha. And Ramshah was telling him, he said, I heard in Ottawa, because Ramshah had a son who lived in Ottawa. He said, I heard in Ottawa, he said, you fight the Mochenta Shiltaira. So my father said, listen, I try and do what I can do. So Shach said, it's not good that the whole world hates you, right? It's not a fun thing when people don't like you. Don't, don't do. And then my father came, I wasn't there actually, my brother was there that, that time. My father came back. The first thing he told me when he landed was, was this Misa with Rav Shach. I want to conclude by thanking my sister and my brother-in-law who added on an immeasurable amount of time to the life of my father without any doubt. Thank my, thank my brother, who was the Iker when it came to a fool, he took care and he was on top of it. Dr. Kenny Greenwald, who managed to meld professional medicine with the heart of a Yiddish doctor. My dear, dear cousin, Dr. Zev Diana, who whenever we need anything, we speak to him. And the aides, Jean and Leo and June, who not, it wasn't that they're professional. Professional, we could not be professional, but they had a Gavaldika heart and they really, really did a wonderful job. I would be remiss if I would not mention at this time my mother, who took care of him for many, 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 many years. And she was Mamish and Asa Connect, though, in, in, in everything. And my uncle, uh, and his wife, Rachel. I remember the last time he saw his brother, my uncle, they were looking at each other and they're staring in their face. I never understood shot sometimes words damage. If you would have seen the look on their faces, it was Mamish, a lesson for all of us. And then of course my aunt, uh, my aunt Renata and my cousin and my father, Baruch Hashem, as the Rav said, helped everyone, took care of everyone. And he was a chroy for a lot of masters, for a lot of individuals, and for his mishpacha.
What do you find in the center? El Molirachami Shaykhain Bamejoim Ametayim Nukhon Khayna Can it fail to know? Am I always kidding? I am Borok Mordechai Ben David, Sholach Leilamoi. Eganei the safe circuit of all the Yailami needs for its rare highness, Nishma Soi. I don't know who Nahal or Soi. The Yanuach, the Sholoim, all Nishkavoi. The Noimar Omer. The Guru will be in the good section of the path of Sloan. The Shiva is going to be in the home of Janowski's four Bonacars. Uh, Shachar seven o'clock, Mincha eight thirty, and the last day of Shiva is Friday and two o'clock Mincha. Class to announce that it's possible that the the public health will be perhaps as long. So you might want to bring along a mask. You I'd like to thank all of you who joined the COVID Achrin for Dr. Diana. Uh, if you'd like to stay on Zoom, I know there's much of the family is still on Zoom and you want to exchange some uh, memories. It will be recorded. We will keep the room a little bit open for about 15 minutes. We'll not be showing any pictures of the actual Kavura from Bathurst Lawn, but we will attempt to show you the actual Avaya from the base Medrash. Once again, on behalf of the Diana family, my name is Akiva Balter. On behalf of the Chavar Kadisha, the Christmas Roll of Toronto, thank you for joining us this afternoon. It's a lot cooler now than it was before. Bring a husband. What's the look for you have so you can see that that one can't this Thank <laughs> you.
On behalf of the Heber Kadisha, as well as the Diana family, we'd like to thank Yossi Simon for providing exceptional pictures and sound this afternoon from a good as Yisrael of Toronto. Uh, Yossi, if you hear this, and I, I think you can, uh, we just need to at least be in the kind of the mitzvah of Levia with our eyes uh, and watch as the as the Oren travels down the street. Thank you. Kiva. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I'm staying indoors because of training, and I don't want to mess this up. This, uh, no problem. Like, You're doing fine. Just stay inside and just fine and just watch the the. No, I don't expect you to climb to the rooftops and follow it. But I, just we could see a little bit to be Mekayim the mitzvah and watch the sure. the uh, RN go down the street, and that's fine. And we'll leave the room a little bit open for if the family wants to exchange memories in any way. One of the reasons why they um, they made the Levaya in the base medrash was because they were concerned that at the feld, if it would start raining, they would not be able to to provide proper espadim. And I think they made the right choice. This was very bekovedik and be, very befitting for Doctor Diana, who always carried himself with grace and a certain, uh, I guess you want to say. Aristocracy, is that such a word, Yossi? Aristocracy. Aristocracy, thank you. Yes. It... You're really funny. <laughs> You know, Yossi, I, I, um, I remember one of the first times that I lay downstairs uh, and the Diana's all daven there. So my first memory is how the Diana's always had, you know, by how one went underneath. It. I don't know if you can hear me, but they all used to go under each other's talus and bench each other. So Dr. Deanna would be benching his children and then his children would be bench. It always reminded me of their own children, children and then eventually as well. Each one wrapped up every single time. Not young to remember that. It was, I, I called it multi-level right. body. But I, I remember the first time that I, you remember that. Right. I called it the nine generational gap <laughs> oh, beautiful. because they all, all did but I do remember that bridging, I laid for the bridging first, the gap first time downstairs bridging the gap bridging the generational gap but I, I do remember that um, laying downstairs and I, it was the first time that I laid down there and I, I didn't do a great job and everybody was all over me uh, in his infinite compassion the way he was, he came to me and said, you know, they're correcting you for things they shouldn't even be correcting you because even if it doesn't change the meaning, there's, it's no mistake. So if you lane something and it's the same meaning, there's no reason to correct you. And I, I remember that, that he, he uh, defended me in a very difficult time and everybody else wanted to rip me to shreds.
beautiful. Okay, Yassi, thank you. Uh, if there's somebody here who would like to host this, uh, the next 15 minutes on behalf of the family and exchange some memories, certainly we would be sending them a copy when it's done. Um, but by all means, whether it's the Deanna's in Lakewood or somebody else who wants to host the meeting and exchange memories for the next uh, 10, 15 minutes, we will not be showing you any pictures from the felt. So if anybody wants to host, and moderate some uh, memories about Dr. Diana, their Zeta, then now is the time. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm going to sign out now. Should have a drone. Oh, Going to get there. Oh, and then if you click on Twitter, which we don't have, but it lets you open it, there's a tiny 20 second video. Okay, once again, my name is Akiva Balter. On behalf of the Chavar Kaddish, of Agudas of Toronto, Ms. Haskim, and the Diana family, thank you kindly.